Hello, this is SJ Talks of Life coming back at you with another video. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please, and thank you. Um, I notice a lot of uh, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are coming on here um, talking about... Um, I keep abreast. I'm a, an ex-Jehovah's ex Witness. Um, I, the, the video where I'm talking about... Um, me leaving the organization. I'll try to find it and link it up to this one just in case you're new to my channel and you haven't caught that video. But um, um, I am an I am an ex Jehovah's Witness, um, but I'm not an ex Jehovah Witness channel. <laughs> but I am an ex Jehovah Witness, and there is a the, the ex Jehovah Witness community here on YouTube. Uh, I keep a breath, kind of, you know, um, like to look at a lot of ex Jehovah Witness videos. To um, it's interesting to hear the different stories about uh, how people got into the organization. Um, um, some were born in, some were born into the organization. Some were came in later, like me. Um, some some people joined at a, a young age. So it's just everybody's story is different. Um, some people went through a shunning process, you know, were raised in it, went through a shunning process and got shunned from their families. It, people that have family in it. There's people like me that didn't have any family in it. Um, and so it's not a one size fits all. Not every Jehovah wit ex Jehovah witness. Um, has the same story. Every ex Jehovah Witness has a different story or in a different experience in the organization. But I'm noticing a lot of, and it's a lot of them here. It's a pretty big ex Jehovah Witness community here on YouTube sector. Big, who pretty big ex Jehovah Witness sector community here on YouTube. And it's interesting to hear the different stories and um, the different content, listen to the different content. And I kind of, um, through looking, watching these ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, I find out what's currently going on in the organization. And here lately, a lot of them have been talking about changes that the organization has made. Um that I'm kind of baffled. I kind of have questions in my mind about, um, they said allegedly a lot of people are leaving the organization. Um, there's some Jeho ex Jehovah witnesses that come on YouTube. Um, and they, 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 um, some like this, that's their whole content because they want to come on here and educate people. And 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 they want to open the eyes of the current Jehovah's Witness members, um, but the current when you're in the organization, they tell you to not look at. They call it apostate material. They call uh, any ex Jehovah Witness videos apostate material, and they 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 tell you in the organization do not look at. They tell the people in the organization to not look at and watch apostate videos. Ex, which basically is ex Jehovah Witness videos, and but a lot of uh, ex Jehovah Witnesses like to come on and they like to educate people that are even thinking people that are already in the organization. They're trying to wake them up, and um, people that are actually studying, maybe thinking about getting into the organization, they're trying to educate people on. Um, the organization and um, well to make a long story short just in case you're new to my channel to make a long story short I did my research I did the research and I started comparing their Bible to King James Version and all that and I noticed that there was a lot of discrepancies that I noticed that they made a lot of changes in their Bible and that was what, what woke me up and that was uh, an eye opener to me um and I prayed it wasn't an overnight decision. I prayed about it uh, for about a year. I prayed about it. It wasn't an overnight decision um, 
for me to leave the organization because like I said, I prayed about it um, and God opened up my eyes and he showed me um, and I was willing to open up my eyes and my heart to, sh for, to see what he showed me and there was just a lot of discrepancies when I started comparing. I started doing my research and started comparing the Bibles and and I noticed that, that there was a lot of discrepancies and everything like that. And that's how a lot of ex-Jehovah Witnesses have woke, woken up and now, um, and in in the lot of the uh, 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 child, the sexual abuse, you know, um, court cases and everything that they got going on and all that kind of stuff, <clears throat> that's a that's problematic too. So um, I've been fading now for uh, shoot, I can't about a couple years maybe. Since I think I've been fading for a couple of years now, two or three years I've been fading now. And um, so um, I like to, like I said, I like to watch a lot of ex Jehovah Witness. And I did a video, I'm going to probably link that video up to this one as well. About, I was talking about trauma. I was talking about the trauma. A lot of ex Jehovah Witnesses come out with trauma. Um, and I was talking about how I don't. I'm not feeling the trauma. And like I said, everybody's situation is different. Everybody's story is different. Some people were born into the organization. Some people were born into the organization and they got this either disfellowshipped or they walked away and they got shunned by their family members. So that is traumatizing. Anytime you get shunned from your family members, then that is traumatizing. And so some people have had very bad experiences in the organization. So it's, it's different for everybody. If it, um, you know, for every ex Jehovah's Witness, there's everybody has their story. Me, I, I can honestly say I didn't have any trauma. Um, in the organization, I know I had a lot of questions. Um, there was some things that I didn't agree with when I was in the organization. There was things that I didn't agree with, but because I thought it was the truth, you know, because indoct indoctrination is real guys indoctrination indoctrination is real doctrination uh if i'm saying, if I'm saying that right that's that's real it's real it's real and sometimes if you know with people that's in organized religions like that they get so indoctrinated even if there's things that you don't agree with if you get indoctrinated and in my mind i was still thinking oh well this is still the truth it's still the truth and, but like I said, when I did the comparing, did the research and started comparing the Bibles, I realized that it wasn't the truth. <laughs> and, um, and so I, I raised, I had a lot of questions in my mind. There were some things that I didn't agree with and which is coming to get to my next point. The next thing I'm about to say is that. I, uh, I hear that they're making a lot of changes in the organization. It's another red flag that is popping up because um, I think I said it in my other video, another video I did. Um, the governing body came forth and said that they wasn't inspired by God. And that, that's, I thought that was, hmm, that was a red flag from, you know, and now I hear that, um, three changes. Well, they, 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 they said something about, now I don't know all the details on, they said something about, um, first of all, you don't, they don't have to report time anymore. Um, cause you, you have to report, you can go out to field service. You have to report your field service time. Um, and I think they, they changed it and said that you don't have to report no more. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're ex Jehovah Witness or look in the comment section, they said that you didn't have to report your time anymore. Um, I used to report three hours a month when I was in the organization. I would report three hours a month because I would do informal witnessing and I really didn't get out and actual do any actual door knocking on a regular basis, but I would do some informal witnessing. So I would report that, you know, 
Um, but that's what I heard one change that they made. And there was another change that they made. Uh, they call these changes new light. And I said in my other video um, about the trauma, the video that I did. Um, I think it was that video I said that or it might have been another one. Ain't no such thing as new light. What do they mean by new light? Because the Bible doesn't change. Last time I checked, the Bible doesn't change. The word of God doesn't change. So what is it that they mean about new light? They, they, the elders or the governing body decides to make a change and then they say new light. So what is, what is it that they exactly that they mean by new light? Because the Bible, the word of God doesn't change. Another change that they came forth and did was <clears throat> the men, men, all the men in the organization could not wear beards. It was a rule. It was a rule that all the men in the organization could not wear beards. Now they're saying that the men can wear beards now. Must that have facial hair? Mustaches and beards. I, don't, I, I, I think before they couldn't have any of that. They couldn't have. I don't believe they could have any of that before. They, 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 they could have beards now. And the thing is, Jesus Christ had a beard. I didn't really get too caught up in that rule when I was in it because I knew that it was a rule, but I didn't really ponder too much on it because, well, I'm a female. It doesn't affect me. <laughs> it didn't affect me. So, um. I didn't really, really ponder too much on that one when I was in the organization. But um, some extra witnesses are coming on here saying that a lot of men in the organization used to get reprimanded for wearing the beard. They would get reprimanded and reproved or whatever. Uh, they would get in trouble for wearing beards. And now they're, they're flipping a the script saying they didn't flip the script and said that the men can wear the beards now. And Jesus Christ had a beard. They would depict Jesus Christ, which is not how Jesus really looks, but that's a whole nother video. Uh, they would de depict Jesus Christ in, the, in their literature as having a beard. So how come them in, why isn't it in a lot of uh, men back in, in that time period had beards? So why why was it a problem with men where in the congregation wearing a beard? Why was it ever, why was it ever an issue? It should have never been an issue. So that was one change that they made. Another change that they made was now, uh, apparently, now the women can wear pants. Now that one kind of pisses me off. Because when I was in the organization, I wore a nice pants. I don't, I'm not sure if I was already baptized. I think it was before I got baptized. I think because I studied for five years before I got baptized and I was an unba unbaptized publisher. And um, for those of you that don't know what that means, an unbaptized publisher is someone that um, you go out and feel service. You know, you go, you go door knocking right along with the other Jehovah's Witnesses. You go out and feel service along with all the other Jehovah's Witnesses. That's an unbaptized publisher, but you're just not baptized. Uh, so I was uh, I was uh, um, not baptized yet. I was an unbaptized publisher, and you know I came to the meetings on a regular basis, and I wore one of my you know uh, you, uh, you can't go wrong with with a with a nice pantsuit, you know, and I wore not aware aware of the rules. I wore a nice one of my nice pantsuits to. Um, the meeting and I was told that it wasn't appropriate that women couldn't wear pants to the to the meetings. Uh, needless to say, you know, in the wintertime, uh, particularly if I'm going out in service, I would wear uh, pants underneath my skirts. <laughs> and I know I'm not the only Jehovah Witness woman that did that because it was cold outside. It was cold outside. It's cold. It's freezing. So, yeah, I did wear uh, pants underneath my dresses, the skirts, you know, um, tucked in my boots. <laughs> I did that a lot. And I know I'm not the another. I know I'm not the only Jehovah Witness that did that. I'm sure a lot of the sisters did that. 
So, um, or are currently doing that, you know. Um, but I, that one kind of me messed me up because I'm like, they, you know, they, they told me that it wasn't appropriate. And um, now they're saying that it's okay for women to wear pants to the meetings. So they, they're flipping the script on that rule. They're changing that rule. And and I, I was kind of salty about that when I was I had to be honest, when I was in the organization, I was a little salty about that, you know, not being able to wear pants because I like I, li I, I like you, hey, a woman. Hey, a girl can't go wrong with a nice pants suit and it make it so bad. Um, a sister gave me a pants suit, a, 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 a pants suit was given to me by one of the sisters, it was nice pants suit, you know, it had a little, it had the pants, and it had a little vest, and a, and a nice jacket that went to it, and I couldn't wear the pants, but I could wear the, the little, it had a shirt, it had like a shirt, and a, a nice jacket that went to it, so I couldn't wear the, the pants, but I could wear the jacket and the shirt, so I would have to wear a skirt with the jacket and the shirt. I couldn't wear the pants. So I was a little perturbed by that, you know. Um, so the, the thought that they they changed that rule, when I heard, when I found that out, I was like, say what? <laughs> so that blew my mind. When I found that out, that blew my mind. And that the women can actually wear pants now, that kind of blew my mind. You know, because the whole time I was in it, and I think I was in an organization all together, I want to say 16 years, uh, I think, all together, I was in the organization, um, including the time that I studied. And that whole time I was in it, we couldn't wear, women could not wear pants. And now they're flipping the script and changing that rule. So I hear that there's a lot of people that are leaving the organization. And so they're 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 kind of laying laying back on the rules, because um, there is a lot of unscriptural rules in the organization. There are lots of unscriptural rules, um, and then another one that they uh, it was another one. Um, beards, women can wear pants. No turning in of the time. I, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. And it was another change that they just did. Oh, I think, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that you can speak, you can, you can speak to this fellowship people now. Um, you can speak to this fellowship people now. It used to be that if someone was this fellowship, you could not speak. You could even speak to them. I forget what scripture they base. They base that on a scripture. Needless to say, I kept reading that scripture over and over. And now they Although all these years they said you could not even speak to someone that was disfellowship, that if they come to the hall and they're disfellowship, they're pretty much ignored. And now they have a rule that they changed it, and now they're saying that you can speak to someone that's disfellowship. That kind of made me mad too. Because it was a sister, a dear sister that was in the organization that I went to school with her and everything. And she got this fellowship. She was a friend of mine. And she got this fellowship. And I seen her in the store. And I I didn't speak to her, but I kind of I did kind of look at her and smile at her a little bit. And then um I then she passed away. She passed away. So, and then I, after she passed away, I was like, I was wishing that I could have spoke to her. And so that's what I'm saying. They, they come out to, with, they, this is what makes me mad. They're making all these changes now that when people, all these years, they told people that they couldn't speak and all this kind of stuff and the damage that that had, that had done to people not being able to speak to their friends, associations or family members, close associations that they had in the organization, all the mental, emotional damage that that caused people to not being able to speak.
because after she died, I felt instantly felt bad that I didn't get a chance to talk to her. You know, I couldn't talk to her that day that I seen her. And so that's what I'm saying. And, you know, the emotional damage over the years. And then um, some Jehovah's, it's, it's the ex Jehovah witness. His name, by, his name is by, he's by the name of Jerron. And I think him and some other Jehovah Witnesses, ex Jehovah Witnesses, have came on here, and they said that they make these changes, and when they had these rules in effect, it caused a lot of damage, um, emotional, mental damage to people. And some people got reprimanded and disfellowshipped and things like that, and they're not even coming back and apologizing to folks. Um, that what the, because. They changed the rule. So I, I think they changed, did some changes. I think they changed the blood. I'm not 100% sure on that one. They said you could take blood fractions now because it's no no blood transfusions. And I think they changed it and say now you can take blood, blood fractions. Not 100%. Does that mean plasma? I got to do a little research on that one. What do they mean by blood fr fractions? Is it plasma? That one I got to do a little research on. So that's what I'm saying. That's a major red flag. Um, the, the one that really blows my mind is when the governing body said that they wasn't inspired by God. That is a major red flag. If, if, that, if that doesn't wake people up, nothing will, you know, in the organization. I'm not trying to tell nobody what to do, but if that doesn't wake people up, then nothing will, you know. In that organization, I mean, um, I, I hear that they're losing a lot of people, and that's why they're making these changes. But is the word of God doesn't change, and that's 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 what constantly runs through my mind is that the word of God does not change. You can't cherry pick the Bible, and you you can't just, I you know, say you can't just say stuff and make a rule and say it's based on the scripture when it's really unscriptural is really unscriptural rule and it's not based on the scripture and then i don't know it, it's if you're an ex jehovah witness looking at this video hit me up in the comment section it's just i just think it's mind-blowing and i had to talk about that i had to address that because i think all these changes that they're making it's, it's kind of mind-blowing it's like wow I'm like really looking at these ex Jehovah Witness videos saying they made this change and that change. And I'm like looking at that and like, wow, seriously? Wow, they did that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I tell you, the past one, the past one kind of kind of ruffles my feathers a little bit because I would have had love to wear my pantsuit many, many, many times in the organization. And that one time that I wore it, they said, oh, it's not appropriate. Now they're sending, turn around and saying that women can wear. That kind of, yeah, that ruffles my feathers a little bit. And so, and I'll probably do another video talking about all the rules. <laughs> I'll make that another video. All the rules that I, I broke. I was sitting there thinking the other day. <laughs> And I was thinking about all the rules that they had in the organization. And um, I said, I, I, I realized that I broke quite a few of them. <laughs> and so I'll make that another video. Um, and talk about um, the, uh, the I'll, I'll go over all the unscriptural rules that they have, have in the organization and all the ones that I broke, you know, pretty much. And so that'll make that a whole nother video. <laughs> and so, um, I don't know. Maybe I was critically thinking the whole time I was in the organization. I mean, maybe I was critically thinking the whole time I was in the organization. It's like if I didn't agree with something, I just, you know, didn't, didn't go along with it. You know, and just, you know. And some, you know, people could probably argue that, oh, well, your heart was never into it to begin with. Well, 
I know what the Bible says and I know what it does. I, I like I'm no Bible scholar. You never graduate from the Bible. There's still some things in the Bible that I'm not 100% clear on. So I'm not claiming to be a Bible expert or scholar here, but I know that a lot of the, the rules that they was making up and everything, you know, wasn't in the Bible. So I figure if it's not in the Bible, then then why do I have to then why do I do I have to do it if it's not in the Bible? So it's it's um it, it you do have to do you have to think critically. Um and like I said in my other video, you don't you do not need a religion to serve God. You don't need a religion to serve God. All of them will tell you, I don't care what religion is it, it is, they will all tell you the same thing. You need to be in this religion to be saved. You ain't saved unless you are in this religion and you're following this religion to the letter. Now that's not what they come out, that's not what they actually say, but but that they say it in so many words. They don't actually say that, but they say it in so many words. This is the religion to everlasting life. You're not going to gain everlasting life no other way but through this religion. And they're all like that. All of them across the board, not just Jehovah Witnesses. It's all of them across the board that think the same way. You know, that this is the, this is the, this is the, the pathway to everlasting life. This organization here. And it's a lot of, a lot of it is a lot of times it's about money. A lot of times it's about money or, or, or a particular church or a particular church, you know, the minister or whoever is in a member of that church can, can, can tell you, um, well, yeah, you ain't saved, you know, yeah, you want to keep going to this church because, you know, they try to make it seem like, oh, yeah, this is the way to salvation. Mm -mm. The only way through sal to salvation is Jesus Christ. If you accept John 3, 16, if you accept Jesus Christ, Christ into your heart as your Savior, Lord and Savior, if you accept him into your heart, then, because you can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son. So the only thing, the only way to everlasting life is Jesus Christ. He's the only mediator. Jesus is our only mediator. It is not an organization. It is not a church. It is not a person. It is through Jesus Christ. And it's only through Jesus Christ are you going to gain salvation. It is not through an organization. You do not need a religion or a church to gain everlasting life. So that's what they all tell you. But that's, and that's what I, I realized uh, after leaving the organization. I was a bit weight lifted off my shoulders because may the truth set you free. And that's when I realized, I realized that, hey, I don't need an organization to be, to serve God or to gain everlasting life. You know, I've accepted Jesus, you know, years ago technically been baptized twice you know because I got baptized in the organization and I got baptized through another church many many years ago and um, so um, you know you, if you accept Jesus Christ into your heart you know you repent you pray and you repent and you accept him into your heart and you try to live your life the best way you can live you read your Bible you try your best to live according to God's word and you, you love thy neighbor and you, um, you just try to live, be the best person you can live. Try to live, be a footstep follower to Christ, to Jesus Christ as much as you can because we're, 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 we're going to fall short because we're human. So we're going to fall short. We're not perfect. We're in, we're imperfect. So we're going to fall short. But do the best you can. That's all God wants is our best. He gives us an A for effort. So, you know, try to your best to live according to his laws. Try not to commit any major sins. If you do, repent. And a true repentance is turning away from the sin. It's not just praying. and can't just pray and say, I repent, and then turn around and do the same thing. True repentance is prayer. 
and turning away from the sin or trying your very best to turn away from it and not do it again. So that's true repentance. And so, um, and we actually should repent daily because we fall short daily. So um, that's the only thing we can do, you know, but it's not, we don't, we can't, we don't have to, we, there's no church that can save us or organization that can give us salvation um, or any man or whatever can give us your minister or whatever. I don't care how good they are or whatever. Um, they can't give you everlasting life. You know, no organization is responsible for your salvation only through Jesus Christ. So hit me up in that comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you're extra witness looking at this, or if you're somebody that's studying, you're thinking about getting into the organization. Um, I don't know. Or you're just watching this video. Uh, let me know. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are on um, particularly ex Jehovah Witness. Ex Jehovah Witnesses, I definitely want to hear from you. If, you. if you're watching this video, let me know in the comment section. What are your thoughts on all these different changes that they make? And they must be losing a lot of people. You know, it must be a lot of people, but uh, it should be some, it should be some major red flags at this point being raised with a lot of the people that's still in it. Um, it, it should be a lot of major red flags should be going up at this point. Um, I know it would be for me. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, hit me up in that comment. I just think it's interesting after I leave the organization, they start making all these changes. <laughs> that's crazy. After I was in it for many years, so it's, I just think it's kind of mind blowing that they would make all these changes after I leave. <laughs> so um, hit me up in that comment section. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, go ahead and hit that like. Um, if you hit the like button, that pushes my algorithm right up there. Uh, subscribe and share. Until the next video, you guys be blessed.